Hey, what's going on there, folks? Good afternoon. It is the Earthmaster here on this Labor Day, Monday, September 4th, 2023, about 11.26 a.m. California time. So technically still morning here along the West Coast. Hopefully everyone's enjoying their day out there. And uh, if you're lucky enough to have a three-day weekend, definitely enjoy it. We do have a 3.2 earthquake coming in. In the last hour here, outside of Bakersfield, just off of this, uh, there's a couple different fault systems that run up across the uh, mountain range here. It looks like it may be off the Willow Ridge Fault or a couple other uh, fault systems here. Outside of Bakersfield, unnamed faults back from the 1952 uh, earthquake fractures. Kind of interesting here, but uh, either way, 3.2 near Lamont, 12 kilometers deep. Uh, see if anybody felt this earthquake out here. Looks like a few folks did report feeling some light shaking, mainly around the area of the epicenter. About three people. All right. Thanks for at least reporting that uh, that uh, felt report there. The USGS, of course, always uh, uh, they kind of take all that information into account there for, for earthquake uh, research. This is underneath an automatic status which means it could get reviewed. It is Monday. Probably no one in the office there at the USGS, so it might take them a little while to review this and uh, get the... Uh, could be could get downgraded, upgraded. Uh, who knows? But for now, 3.2 outside of Bakersfield, California. Uh, there's a little bit of activity here across the Ventura area outside the uh, region from yesterday and today. Remember this area? Seen a little bit of swarming here in the last 30 days show you guys the total tally uh pretty good cluster of earthquakes there coming up on it looks like 242 earthquakes in the vicinity of uh, santa paula down here but uh there's some oil fields out there some type of oil pumping operations there in the mountains could be associated with that uh, also could be associated with a couple of different faults that run through the mountain range there some of these capable of producing uh, some large damaging earthquakes that are uh, actually overdue as far as the uh, time that has passed since a full rupture along some of these faults. So a handful of smaller quakes there today. I'll continue to watch that region. Uh, the rest of Southern California here looks like mainly small microquake activity across the region of the San Jacinto Fault Zone and a couple up here on the San Andreas Fault. The southern branch though for now looks uh, kind of quiet. Not a whole lot going on there uh, as we speak. Northern California about the same quiet as well. Did have a 1.6 just after midnight. Uh, that earthquake about 9 kilometers deep or so. And to the Washington area. A little scattered activity out there around the Kennewick area. And uh, Mount St. Helens. Let's see if we got any further activity overnight. Nothing showing up, but, you know, let's double check that and make sure that uh, we're not missing any major swarm activity. Uh, because it seems like a little hit and miss right now when the USGS decides to put data up on the uh, on the map and when they don't. So we have to check this out for ourselves. And this is all information that's publicly available. Look at that now. One, two, three. Those are almost like drum beats in a way. We've seen something similar but more spread out yesterday. Remember we were talking about this in our update last night. These three quakes. Now, these are bigger than these little one-pointers that they're showing up here. A point one. Let me show you guys here. This is from yesterday. So, there's no way that these earthquakes showing up here on the seismograph stations are point one. Uh, so, overnight, it looks like there's been a handful more. And these, these here are bigger than the ones that we've seen um, yesterday. They're spread out in more time. As far as the time between these quakes, there were a little bit more uh, more space in between. But these here, goodness, uh, it's hard to say. Looks like that came in within the last oh, hour or so. Now, I do have a Mount St. Helens station up here, so it's possible uh, it could have been uh, picked up on here. Not for sure if it did or not, but uh, I have to keep an eye on that. Either way, some uh, odd earthquake activity there again. Three of them. And to me, it, it kind of looks like earthquake activity. It definitely blew off the uh, 
off the chart, so to speak, because this is all flat lined here, as you can see on the area. Um, so that could be some, uh, some larger quakes there, probably over two or maybe three in the magnitude, but uh, nothing showing up again here from the USGS on their official map. Now let me check a local uh, seismograph station here aside from that one and see if that got picked up as well. That's at the uh, summit area, the very extreme, uh, you know, the center of Mount St. Helens, so to speak. Let's check this one out and see if that picked that up as well. There's the ones from yesterday that got picked up. Now these that uh, showed up on the other graph are not as prominent here across the area as far as the signature goes. I'm really not seeing it all that much. It looks like those are them right there. But notice that the uh, magnification here on the amplitude scale is much smaller. Um, so let's see where that's taking place. That is up north. That one's not working. Maybe over here. Uh, let's see what this one is. EDM. This one's offline. Uh, I hope they don't pull these offline. If they start pulling these, start pulling the plugs on these uh, seismograph stations, I'm going to be definitely calling somebody tomorrow morning. So let me check over here. Is this one working? This one's working too. Uh, there's those three little um, marks, but less prominent on that station. So I'm thinking, uh, let's see, maybe way over here, see if anything got picked up. Nope. So whatever is going on is definitely appears to be right underneath this area, right underneath the region of Mount St. Helens, the cone area up there. So whether this is deeper movement, uh, it's possible, could be, um, but, or maybe shallow, who knows? Either way, there's not a whole lot of reporting on it. Uh, but from the look at these seismograph stations here, they look localized right here to this area. So we'll continue to watch that. Uh, for uh, some movement again and it uh, I don't know if they showed up here or not on the Mount St. Helens uh, seismograph station here potentially they did but I wasn't around to see it an hour or so ago either way we'll continue to watch that and uh, report back on that and see if anything kicks back up around the Mount St. Helens area uh, Yellowstone National Park not a whole lot going on here across the area but I always like to double check that as well because Mount the uh, well the Yellowstone station here um, sometimes gets earthquake activity and uh, not reported so to speak never gets reported sometimes they do sometimes they don't this here looks like some types of some type of interference out here that I'm seeing uh, really not seeing anything major uh, going on far as earthquake activity goes there's a handful of smaller quakes here in the last few hours notice these little spikes here now those are definitely earthquakes uh, but probably around the 0 0.2 0 0.3 magnitude not three but uh, 0.3 and as you can see there's not a whole lot showing up here across the map there are just a handful of uh, earthquakes there on the graph but nothing being reported again it is the weekend and um, you know it's just not that important i guess all right, uh, further out uh, in the rest of the country here, Arkansas showing a little bit of activity outside of Little Rock, a 2.1 and a 2.0 uh, out here across this mountain range. Now, there is some fault systems that run out here. I think that may be separate from the new Madrid seismic zone. Uh, not 100% certain, though. Let me see. Uh, so you got the main area of the new Madrid seismic zone here. This area definitely capable of producing some large earthquakes. Um, but Arkansas sits within an area that can see some earthquakes um, historically. Um, but I'm not 100% certain. There's got to be some fault systems that run through here, some older faults uh, across these mountain ranges, the Boston Mountain areas, uh, Boston Mountains area. Um, and we really haven't seen too much activity out here the last 30 days or so, specifically in this area. It doesn't show a whole lot. Um, so we'll continue to watch that. Either way, a little bit of activity stretching out there across the uh, Arkansas area today. Down here across the Puerto Rico area. Been watching that um, last night as well. We've seen a little bit of movement up north and south here on the Caribbean plate. Uh, looks like that activity is continuing somewhat today with a 3.6 within the last hour uh, up around the Puerto Rico Trench. Uh, so we'll continue to keep that area 
uh, in mind for some movement. Not a whole lot going on in South America, as you can see, at least uh, according to the USGS. Doesn't mean there isn't any, but most likely it's all below the 4.0 threshold. But far as any uh, moderate to major earthquake activity, nothing showing up there on the map. The Atlantic is showing some movement, though, so that could amplify some conditions out here across this plate boundary. I got a 5.1 out in the mid Atlantic Ridge. Uh, that was earlier this morning. 5.1 and then uh, yesterday we seen that uh, well actually we did have another one down here 4. 4. 4.9 in the southern mid-atlantic ridge so uh, two earthquakes out here today that's kind of separated apart but still this is a divergent boundary and um, yeah it's been awfully quiet there for as far as recent times go so we're starting to kick back up here slightly Watch the South Sandwich Trench here with this activity down south. Uh, movement across the Mediterranean. Quite a few clusters of twos and threes out here today. It looks like maybe there was a four out there last night around the Turkey area. That's all being provided by the, um, uh, the plate dynamics out here across the region of the Mediterranean. It's almost always, they're almost always having earthquake activity. Uh, but quite a few twos and threes out there today. Uh, some older movement out here around the eastern Afghanistan area from yesterday. Quite a few fours, deeper movement quakes. Some activity out in China as well. We're not really seeing anything major going on here across the Java Trench for now. That uh, area is kind of our halted zone, our quiet zone, so to speak. We haven't really seen too much momentum uh, stretch up across this plate boundary uh, in the last couple days. We've had a couple of small quakes, but nothing major. Uh, there's an odd earthquake from last night, intraplate earthquake in between the Filipino plate. Uh, it is on the Pacific plate, but uh, away from the plate boundary, so to speak. And those odd earthquakes there are definitely something I'd like to study because uh, you know, most of the time the earthquake activity uh, sticks to the plate boundary. So these odd quakes like we've seen here yesterday and the movement down in the Tasman Sea here over the past couple weeks has been of uh, some interest here. Uh, but for now, uh, the last earthquake in this area looks like near the Maluka Sea, 5.0 deep, 103 kilometers deep in that area. Some uh, movement down in New Zealand, USGS actually reporting a 2.9 South Island of New Zealand. So I wish they would just show maybe all of the two pointers or at least give an option up here, you know, integrate that into their map. That would be awesome. Um, but as you can see, you know, there's really no option for all of the earthquakes here across the, uh, uh, across the area of the globe. I wish it covered more of the international communities with smaller quakes. Maybe, maybe drop it down to three, but either way, uh, 2.9, 16 kilometers deep. Let's double check the GeoNet servers and see what we got going on here. Um, GeoNet reporting this as a 3.0 near the Christchurch area. That's probably why the USGS is reporting that uh, due to the population density in that region. Uh, seven kilometers deep. That, uh, let's see here. Aside from that, some movement from yesterday, three days ago, that 3.8. Let's see if we can find that, uh, that signature of that 2.9 or 3.0, one of them, around the Christchurch area. That's going to be, um, has it been 10 hours ago? Yes, it has. So that was just uh, around 1 o'clock my time there, local time to me. That's going to be that 2.9 showing up pretty nicely here, or 3.0, uh, whichever one you want to pick. The Queens Valley near uh, Christchurch, South Island, New Zealand. Aside from that... We'll continue to watch New Zealand because that is in our quiet zone. And I say quiet zone because if you look at the last 30 days of movement, look at this. A lot of activity. And this is, the, you know, New Zealand sits on a plate boundary between the uh, Pacific and the Australia area, Australian plate. So minimal movement down here across New Zealand. We did see some deeper quakes in the area of North Island, 181 kilometers for that uh, 5.1. That was 185 kilometers, 200 kilometers. So things are getting geared up, I think, across the New Zealand area uh, for some uh, larger movement. How large? I don't know, but uh, this area has been quiet 
you know, with only a handful of smaller quakes here and there. So we'll watch this area. It's definitely uh, getting up there as far as the uh, seismic gap goes. All right, uh, there we go. Was I just chatting about this? <laughs> just chatting about watching the South America region due to this activity. Well, looks like maybe I spoke that into existence. 4.4. Or was this up on the map? I think they just threw it up on the map because it wasn't there a minute ago. Right? And now it is. So they just threw that up on the map. 4.4 uh, South America region. Of course, that's going to kick up. Should kick up here with divergent boundary activity out here. Um, let's see what else we got. The Big Island, Hawaii. Things are calm for now. They, they kind of dropped off in earthquake activity across the Kilauea volcano. There's not a whole lot of change there. Um, sometimes we get inflation, deflation, earthquake swarms, lack of earthquake swarms, and it's just an ongoing event um, since the pause in the eruption back in uh, um, June, right? I believe that was June. Um, doo -doo -doo. What date was that? I can't remember exactly, but uh, the latest update, this was put out uh, the 4th today, uh, shows that um, it's not erupting. And the uh, Kilauea Summit is currently exhibiting signs of the elevated unrest. And that's due to the earthquake activity. Um, yeah, since, a, since the end of the last eruption back in June, they don't mention the date here, but I think it was June 12th or something. Or June 19th. There we go. Um, so we just kind of continue to watch that. Um, I think we'll see another earthquake swarm or maybe another intense earthquake swarm deeper uh, below the area of the swarming right now to possibly increase the the mag the uh the amount that's down there in the plumbing system far as the magma goes in order to maybe push that back up to the surface to create the eruption right now these are pretty consistent they've they've stayed roughly within about a kilometer or two below the surface so uh you know, just continue to watch that uh california lighting back up out here there's another one in the uh Fillmore area. This is just outside the Ventura region. So it looks like definitely some strain out here amongst this area of the state. And that's a little dangerous. I've always thought that this Garlock Fault shear zone is more dangerous than uh, than than what people give it credit for, uh, so to speak. It's you know, it, look at the way it locks up here and and offsets off the plate boundary itself. There's got to be incredible strain out here, you know, with the movement of the San Andreas Fault. General plate movement here, of course, um, is uh, this area, Pacific Plate towards the northwest. Uh, this general area of the um, North American Plate towards the southeast. I don't have my um, plate tectonic map on, but so with that type of movement, you know, that's got to add a whole bunch of strain on these fault systems that run opposite of what the normal uh, plate boundary does. So got to think about that. This area here is just, you know, it's like it's almost like the X is right here, Frazier Park. You can almost see an X on the plate on the fault system here. But uh, I think that's I think that's a little bit more dangerous area than uh, what people believe. Of course, the San Andreas Fault down here as well. That's a that's a one that's getting ready, I'm sure. Just a matter of time, I believe. All right, uh, what else we got? Anything uh, major going on here? What about Fiji area? These are from last night, deeper movement quakes. So a lot of older activity here now. Um, again, most of this is from yesterday, aside from the Hawaii activity. The last one was a 5.0 deeper activity. So it looks like we may be getting something uh, potentially larger uh, at the surface regions in this area. Deep movement across the board um, all over the place in this area, but uh, very minimal surface adjustment. So that could be coming up here today or very soon. All right, um, let's move on and check out space weather activity, see what we have. looks like the sun's coming to life slightly noticing a couple bright regions out here look at that beauty of a plasma cloud out here a plasma uh, i don't know what to call it. plasma blob so to speak um i was watching that dance 
uh, on a couple solar videos here yesterday. Pretty neat to see. Uh, but far as sunspot activity, we are definitely getting uh, some growth within these sunspots. Let's take a look here and see what we got. This one here, definitely starting to look more dynamic. We noticed that yesterday. Uh, it's getting a couple different different independent cores with it within the sunspot region. And it's directly facing Earth right now. Bullseye shot if anything were to blast off. So hopefully uh, we'll see if this thing kicks up and uh, provides us with a uh, nice CME so we can see some uh, cool auroras out here. Earth directed uh, CME would be nice. A newer sunspot out here on the eastern limb. Um, and the rest of these sunspots here look fairly stable. Uh, there's this one here that kind of popped up out of the blue too. So maybe these three areas, definitely this region here, we got to watch uh, for some flaring. That's 3121. Notice even since yesterday, it wasn't quite as dynamic, colorful. Uh, and today's uh, magnetogram image shows quite a bit of complexity within that core. Uh, so that's a pretty decent uh, thread, I think, for some flaring. Right now, 95% chance for a C flare, M flare at 25, X flare around 5% chance. We'll continue to watch that uh, sunspot there. That's going to be 34, 21. Again, pretty dynamic. All right, uh, no major solar events headed our way. I don't know, maybe a surprise here or there. You just never know. Seem to uh, have quite a bit of solar surprises here recently. Uh, weather outlook here today shows uh, an enhanced, well, slight risk. I was going to say enhanced, but that's slight risk up here. Across the North and South Dakota area, portions of Wyoming as well. Uh, that's mainly due to some wind events out there. We're talking about above 65 knots or greater. Remember, these are knots, so the wind speed is going to be higher within this area of um, the dashed region within about 25 miles of a point. So 10% or greater. Those are going to be due to the uh, straight line or inflow winds from those thunderstorms. Uh, slight chance of uh, some large hail out there as well. And uh, yeah, so moving over, it looks like a little bit of cooler temperatures for you guys in this area of the country. Let's see what we got for hurricane status. Remember the model last night showing a hurricane kind of clipping out here across the eastern portion of the country. We're going to put this into uh, motion and see what we have stirring up out here. There it is. Now that's that's a huge hurricane if that's the case, but it looks like it wants to stay off the eastern portion of the country. We'll continue to watch that. Well, looks like it may clip way up north here. Goodness. Uh, so we'll watch that and see how this plays out. Uh, I'll, I'll keep checking it on each model run. And because this is around the... Uh, at least far as getting close to the east, eastern portion of the states around the 13th of September. And that's in about 10 days or so. So the closer we get in time frame, the models get more accurate. Uh, so we'll continue to watch that. Looks like another trough of low pressure developing out here. That's good uh, across the California Pacific Northwest area. Let me check out the um, symbol here real quick. This is right now, this is a low pressure system. Did I see snow out there in Utah? I think I've seen a couple pictures of snow around the Utah area, uh, east of Salt Lake City, I believe, uh, floating around on social media. Goodness, that's awesome. I love it. I was reading a couple of the comments, they're like, go away, it's too soon. We're not ready for the miserable weather. <laughs> I'm thinking, really? Cold temperatures and snow is miserable? To me, that's awesome. Outside chopping up firewood, you know, staying inside, drinking some hot cocoa and having a fire going with the family, watching TV or playing some board games. I think that's awesome. Bring on the snow and cold temperatures. I'm not even joking. So looking down the road here, the 20th, 7th, now well, I was trying to see where that trough was across the uh, California area later in the month, but this model is still not really showing anything. Uh, either way, it looks like... Um, got some warmer temperatures coming up here uh, towards this week and next weekend. But nothing we can't handle. I think we're supposed to have low 90s uh, for the majority of this week out here in Northern California. So I can I can handle that. I'm, I'm done with the hundreds. I'm done with 110, 115 degrees like we've seen earlier this year here. It just happens. 
I don't know how anyone can step outside and say, ah, this is enjoyable. <laughs> it's just not possible. It can't be. Unless you're cold-blooded. I don't know. That's weird. I'm not a big fan of the heat. All right. Have a good one, folks. We'll catch you guys back here uh, a little bit later on uh, this evening. I got some more earthquake activity popping up here in Southern Cal. 1.0 now. Definitely watch this area. Seems to be lighting up uh, today. Let's see. Where's my uh, seismograph stations at? Yellowstone's offline, so I may have to try to find a different a different one. Either way, the seismograph stations right now look pretty calm for now. Have a good day. Enjoy the Labor Day. If you have a three-day weekend, definitely enjoy it. I don't know what I'm going to do. I might barbecue. I may not. It all depends on what my last-minute thoughts are. Take care. We'll catch you guys back here a little bit later tonight. Peace out.